Hey, witches. Hi, witches. It is week seven of the Beginner Witch series, and we are talking about magical properties of everyday items tonight. Specifically, though, we're doing some theory and then a little bit of uh, to-dos at the end of it. See you in a minute. Good evening, witches. How are you? Hello. Hello. Welcome to week seven of the new witch of the beginner witch series. <laughs> Love it. How do we change all of our names around? We forget who we are sometimes. <laughs> we do. <It's> okay. <laughs> Trying to get on board with it. It's only been a uh, um, when did we change? Over the summer, right? Just yeah. not very long ago. When we actually. took our two month uh yeah, but but literally. We decided, it, but then we only like actually did it and started using it. Yeah. So tonight is week seven, like Kat said, and tonight's discussion is about magical ingredients. No, no, that's not it either. Magical yep. properties of everyday items. Items. Yeah. Where? Why do I want to say ingredients? So because much? this, 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 this original, um, originally, this course was called Magic Ingredients One. Oh yeah. And that's Magic right, Ingredients right. Two, but we're from our spring, you know, course. Yeah, yeah, from our spring course. So for those of you who are new, we we had this thirteen week course in earlier in the year, uh -huh. for, um, and it was really successful. We had a lot of great people join. We're so glad you're here. It's so new glad new. you're here tonight. Oh my gosh. Um, <clears throat> just want to this, say but this is uh the second rendition of the beginner witch series yes. which i think overall we focus more on theory this time than a lot of stuff like List. a lot of like a lot of information so um if you think a lot of information would be a benefit to you all of our recordings from season one of the <laughs> beginner witch series are I, are out there on youtube i feel like we're survivors <laughs> we're gonna get out to see we are too. we are gonna be a survivor we are because we just talked about how this is gonna move you know what this is gonna look Transition. like going yeah what this is gonna yeah. look, look like going forward yeah and we're thinking we're gonna do beginner witch series like twice a year twice a year because there's so many people interested in witchcraft so we get new people. sign ups all the time all it's the time. very encouraging and just exciting to know that people are on the journey for and they're uh, seeking they're they're seeking yeah, knowledge they're seeking. and yeah and we want to be there to help as many people as we can absolutely which is why we started this school because we know that for the meetup people can't make it live it's why we started the youtube channel i never in a million years would have been like yeah one day i'm going to record myself and put myself on youtube no <laughs> talk about biggest fears when you're a child but i realized how many people we can help doing that because they just have instant access to the lessons and then that's why the online school is coming forward as well so it's like individual trainings and stuff so we have exciting we have exciting things planned for new witches who are interested in what we have to say which of course is our perspective of witchcraft. Oh, yes. And there are many out there. If you've done any research, been on Facebook, any kind of social oh, media, gosh, you'll see. <laughs> or TikTok. <laughs> I, Jamie's not a fan. I'm not a fan. There's just a lot of, I don't I feel like people are always just trying to be like shocking or just throw a lot of stuff out there and see what sticks. And I'm like, do you actually do that in your practice though? Like, is this a thing? Can you teach people to do that? I don't know. So um, I've been a witch for 25 years, and that's one of the reasons why we started this two years ago is because I would, I would train people individually, and I thought, wow, there's got to be a better way to do this. So when COVID came along and my job was, like, eliminated, <laughs> I told my husband, I said, get ready. This is what I'm about to do. Like, I'm going all in on my dream of doing this. And so far, it's been really successful, and I'm really happy with it. It's scary I'll tell you guys I'm facing one of my fears every single time I get on here on camera and then I post the video to YouTube so that is just something that I'm working on and working through and I think about all the people that can benefit rather than my fear like it's not really about me it's about who I can help or or they can hear a message or something that's like really insightful or makes a difference in their path and that's our goal tonight we're hoping that you guys get from this meeting something that will help you on your path um, we're going to go through about 25 minutes worth of material, and then we're going to open up the floor for questions. And it can be about this specific topic, or it can be about anything related to witchcraft. And then we will try to respect everyone's time. We'll try to wrap up at eight o'clock, or maybe, yeah. you know, sometimes we go a little bit late, but yeah. 
we do try to respect that you have families and things to do. Yes. Um, but welcome. It's 706. Yeah. I'm Kat. Yeah. This is Jamie. And you are in week six of the Beginner Witch Seven. series. We're I'm sorry. Seven. Oh, my gosh. So I always flub <laughs> something back. in this. Going back weeks, this is going back now. So week seven of the Beginner Witch series. And tonight we are talking about magical properties of everyday items. One last thing before we get started. We will post uh, to the chat our contact information in case you guys need it uh, a few times for people who join late. Um, so it'll be like our website and Jamie mentioned the school that's coming up in January. If you're interested in that, please subscribe or also subscribe if you want to get the lesson plan email that comes yeah. after this lesson. Yeah. So the, basically the written version of what we're going to talk about tonight. And with that, have you copied me? I am pasting it now. <laughs> so Oh, you're going to use it because it's your computer and you're doing it better. Awesome. I'm going to enter. All right. <laughs> and we're going to get started. Yes. Okay. So a lot of theory tonight, everyone. Uh, not so much, you know, buy, get list. these things. Yeah. L not list of things. We'll cover that next, next, week. next one. Part but two. The, the thing to know about magical properties of everyday items is that everything in the universe is energy each with its own unique energetic vibration. A tree may seem like an inanimate object, but it carries a vibration that sings like a musical note. All things in our universe vibrate and sing like this, in, in this, in this way. Th that is energy in motion. Nothing is standing still, not even a rock or a crystal. They all sing with energy because at a molecular level, molecular, molecular level, everything is vibrating. With this knowledge, this you, is a big concept that is, you guys need to get. This is this big concept. Big concept. Um, with this knowledge, you'll be um, be able to better understand the energetic properties of all items. So literally everything you touch, everything in your house, Jamie's going to say some more about that. Yeah. I had to write notes because I really didn't want to miss the part of explaining this on how when I have real conversations with people, like there's usually a back and forth, but now I just have to like say, it. so I'm going to read from the thing because if you go out in nature and you pick up a leaf, a stick, if you pet an animal, when you're around another human, the laptop that you're on, every single thing in our world has a vibration because nothing is solid. Like, I know that sounds crazy and this is more sciencey than it is witchcraft, but Witchcraft was the like first science. Witchcraft was the original science. We were the original healers, everything. So when you think about that, everything that you have in your household, everything that you touch, yourself, your body, your person vibrates. You have a vibration about you. This is like, I don't know if I'm skipping ahead now because I'm riffing instead of reading. <laughs> but if you meet somebody and you instantly know, you're like, I know nope, that's not my person. I don't like them. Something. I don't know if it's their. Who it hasn't a, experienced that? Or, or even you met a someone place. and you're like, yeah, a or place. A thing. Uh, if there's things you're just totally adverse to, which could be foods or colors or anything, that's all because your energetic alignment is not aligned to that, whatever that thing is. And as you grow or as you add in new things, you can change your energy field about yourself and you can pick up new things or you can set them down. So this is what spell work is really all about as we get towards the end of it, because magical ingredients or magical properties of everyday items witchcraft is literally using just to anybody else it's rosemary right it doesn't have a magical property they're like no this tastes like something um so towards the end of this i get into like seasonings of favorite foods <laughs> because i thought that was, I was like that's interesting if you like mexican versus italian or indian food think about the spices that go into that that is like kitchen witchery right the spells that can come of that so what it means when you meet somebody or you're around something that you actually don't like is you don't have, you don't resonate with them. And resonate means that two energy fields actually link up or sync up. Just going to throw this out there that most women have probably heard, you know, when women get together, their cycles link up. That's vibrationally becoming in tune with each other. So when you're around another human, you pick up traits of theirs. You guys exchange things. Your words might start to sound the same. You have, there's just things that connect, right? That is resonance. That's where two vibrational energies sync up together. All right. I was, I was gonna explain the way that it works, but I think I already said it. There's two ways to use this pattern of resonance, all right? Knowing that everything has an energy and that you can bring in things when you need to feel a certain way, or you can let things go when you need to feel not a certain way or whatever. If you are feeling sad and you bring in crystals that try to promote happiness, you're bringing in that energetic vibration of happiness 
this is why we add these things to spells or our spaces or we decorate in a certain way because it brings in an energetic feeling. So energy in motion is emotions. That's the feeling we get from things or our environment. So that's how you can relate energy being in motion is the energy that you get from it. So as you experiment with things in your surroundings, whether you choose to do spices and spells and herbs, think about how it makes you feel or like, do you like the smell of it? Is it something that brings you pleasure? Is it desirable? Or is it like, this is disgusting. I never want to touch this thing again. I don't like smoke. So burning sage is not my thing. I'd like to spray water or do something else. All those things are just part of your vibration. And that's why we always say like, there's no rules in witchcraft. Nothing's really wrong. It's just you building your personal practice. So that's this, I know I'm talking a lot, sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's what this theory is about tonight is as you feel out what you energetically align with, choose those things. It's one of the reasons why we say like when you get books and they tell you to buy all this stuff, maybe that doesn't resonate with you. Maybe that's not your thing. You can literally do spells and witchcraft without any items. It's just the energy of your emotions and what you push out into the universe. And now I will be quiet because I think I said all the things that I want to say. I will let Kat go on to her Well, session. I was going to add to that, that you talked about bringing uh, crystals into your life that, mm -hmm. that make you feel good and make you feel happy. There also yes. may be things around your house. So let's bring this closer to home oh, yes. or in your own room that you might need to get rid of, like that old box of clothes that no longer things fit. Things that from, don't you make know, you feel that, good. Yeah, that don't make you feel good. That's all, ener that's all energy. And so yeah. if you have things around your house, this is why they say declutter, you know, get rid of stuff, give away those old clothes, find some people who can find someone who can use the things that make you, that don't make you feel good about yourself. That's when, when people talk about like stuck energy, because we're going to get into a little bit of like, what's negativity and what do we do for protection? And why is that a thing? Stuck energy is, it's one of the, it's something that it hasn't moved in a long time. It's just sitting there absorbing whatever is brought to it. So if there's negativity in the space, like, one of my favorite examples, because I think everybody's either seen a movie, heard of somebody, you can understand an abusive relationship. What happens in a place that you've been sick in, it's really hard to get better in that same place because all those memories, all those feelings, all the things have happened there. It's the same thing as if you've been in like a really bad car accident, getting back into a car, no matter what car it is, can be really scary. It brings up all those feelings again. That's the energy can, that you have now associated with that car or that element or that house, person, room, color, couch, whatever it is, the energy imprints onto stuff as we experience things. And then you carry that with you everywhere you go and you continue to push out that energy onto something, assigning it in a category. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just let me clarify it in the Q&A. Well, and also I want to give you an example. So I was in a almost 20 year toxic relationship. I moved 1100 miles away. I left Kansas and moved to Florida. And you know what? That was the thing that like broke the spell for me because when I was there and living in it, I, I literally, I couldn't escape it. And I didn't realize that I couldn't escape it until I escaped it. It was crazy. So, and the energy uh, kept you know, I think uh, anybody would, yeah, you might be able to relate to that story. So, um, so why should you care about this? Understanding that all things have energetic properties can help you connect with things outside of yourself. You don't have to be the answer to all of your problems. Witches use spells, potions, herbs, and crystals to help bring about change. You can use all these things to help heal yourself. Um, you know, like I just told you my story about leaving and coming here. One of the things that I did was as it so happened, both of my daughters were practicing witches when I came here, which I didn't really know anything about it. I started participating in those rituals, you know, the tarot readings and the, just the ceremonies and the celebrations. It really changed me. And it really, I mean, it, it's the it, exposure, it, yeah. you know, to something happier. To, she got out of the, the stuck routine, the energetic routine that was bringing her back in the loop of the behavior, yeah, the loop, that's the, the, thing, loop, the loop, the behavior that you just like get stuck in going round and round in circles. And this is, a, you know, I think this is part of the human experience. Like we have these experiences, we have these bad experiences in our lives and we kind of do get stuck there and it's very hard to break away. And I believe anyway, that witchcraft can help you because you can bring things into your life and focus your energy there and leave that behind of course if you're living in it that's a whole nother talk show so <laughs> <laughs> a whole nother talk show. It, it is making and i totally talk about it for hours <laughs> only because i have so many years experience at it 
that's that's for the future podcast that we can all do. We just talk about I've been thinking about names. I've been thinking about names for the podcast. It's like, oh Lord, you know. So on that note, where Kat's talking about sort of being stuck and what brings people to witchcraft, in my 25 years of helping people get on a path, find a path, choose what's right or wrong for them, and just expose them to stuff. They actually do the choosing. I just give them a ton of information for them to make decisions about, and it always evolves over time. So even the decisions that you make for your practice right now will probably evolve. I'm going to say like 100% will evolve in the future, because if you're evolving, your practice will evolve. The more things that you look into that you find that really work for you, you'll, you'll find your rhythm within the practice. Um, but ultimately, you guys, when I teach witch witchcraft, it is about healing. I believe that witchcraft in every single way comes back to healing of some sort, whether it's emotional, uh, mental, physical healing that we're really looking for for ourselves. Witchcraft offers us that because it's the belief that answers are outside of yourself and that you can bring things around you that make it better. That's what a whole the whole spell and ceremony and ritual is supposed to do is it's a shift in your mindset or in just your everyday thinking to be outside of what you know right now. Um, so I'm going to try to read it because I feel like I wrote this really well. Um, like I said, I believe witchcraft always comes back to healing. Going even further, witchcraft always comes back to healing your mind. Your mind and the thoughts you produce create your reality. If you've ever been around somebody really negative, that they say really negative things constantly, they're just like always in a shit mood. They do that to themselves. That's that circle they're stuck in. That's that loop. They haven't broke that pattern yet. So this is about pattern breaking. You got to recognize it first and want different for yourself before you can break it. But our limiting beliefs about ourselves are actually what stops us from producing results. When people ask me about spells not working, I ask them if they believe that they can have the thing that they're doing a the spell for. If you don't believe it, you can't receive it. I mean... It's as simple as that. You're going through the motions and the actions, but the rosemary and moon water is not what's making your things happen. It's the belief and the mental um, energy, energy that you put into it. So that's what really makes the things manifest, right? This is the same as manifestation, law of attraction, all of that. This is huge circle. All of these things are super related. Um, so the with getting into that, the other thing that we get asked about a lot is protection spells or like evil or curses or hexes. And I want to tell you that you have control over your thoughts and feelings and you create those same things. If you want to believe that you're cursed or hexed or somebody did something to you, then that is absolutely going to be true for you. And it doesn't matter if the person actually did it, you're already living it. You've determined, you've decided that that's what your reality is in this moment, that you are a cursed, hexed person. A personal example, you guys, in my few relationships in my 20s, I would get with get with men that sounds so classy I would choose partners that were doing really well in their life and then as soon as we were together like six months they lose their job they would like be aimless they didn't know what they wanted to do with their life and I used to say that I used to say I'm cursed like I break men I don't know what's wrong with me like they're doing really well at first and then all of a sudden they just kind of become lazy or like they don't want to do anything and I didn't know why I didn't know what was wrong with that situation and so I made up a belief that I'm cursed. Like I, because I'm such a strong woman, I must choose weak men and I don't even know it. And I'm like, no, men they were doing fixing. good. Yeah. I'm like, they were bad. And I, I did this like three times and then I just got pissed off and I stopped dating for five years. So I was, that was one of the limiting beliefs that I told myself. And I didn't date because of that. I was like, well, I'll just be alone and have cats. I'm totally fine with that. I can do that. I can do that. So the, the beliefs that we set for ourselves, we really do start creating that reality. So if you believe something like there's evil in your house, there's evil in your relationship, it will be there. You'll find it. We always find things that support our beliefs. Like that's a scientific fact. Um, so from that, the more emotion that you feel towards a situation, the more real it will be for you. Now, the opposite is true because I love this. If we can put so much fear and worry into our situations, like I have a kid and now he's, you know, almost 17 years old and I've spent many, many nights like terrified that he died in a car accident somewhere because he didn't text me or something. And I have to remind myself not to think those thoughts because I don't want that to become true. Now, our human nature is like protect the physical self, survive, 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 survive. So we, we think that if we worry about everything that we can protect ourselves from the event, because we're like, no, 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 we prepared for this. Like we know what we're going to do. Everything's going to be fine. 
But the more that you think about it or worry about it, the more that thing is being drawn into your situation. Okay, so hexes and curse, just in case anybody's thinking that too, because there's like the Annabelle story. And I mean, I don't think Chucky was like a curse doll. I just, I don't know what he was, like a demon doll. I don't know. So all of these things that we kind of get bought into from witchcraft movies or from hearing things, you know, the exorcist, all that. 99.9% .9 of people who think they're cursed or hexed or, you know, have a demon in them, it's their own doing. It's not that their life hasn't been tragic. It, it has, they've had bad experiences, but they continue to live in the victim circle of all this bad shit happens to me all the time. Bad stuff happens to me. And they say that over and over and over again. And guess what? Bad stuff continues to happen to them. And it's so hard when you're in it. This is something that I try to help witches with. It's so hard when you're in it to get yourself out of it because you're living those bad things. It's like, no, nothing can actually be good. I'm experiencing the bad now. I'm like, but you have to, this is where affirmations or spells come in where you can chant something to yourself. You can fix that mindset by using the words to change it. You're not going to feel it at first. You're going to feel like you're lying to yourself. That's why I say, if you do a spell and you're like, I don't really think this will work, it's not going to work. But if you continue to do this, to say the thing over and over to yourself, like, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I am loved. I am loved. One day when you say it, you're going to feel it. It's going to be like, oh my God. Oh my God. I, now I do. I feel loved. I feel like I love myself. But it takes time to make that, the change in your mind first, right? For that energy to catch up with it. Okay. So I'm one sorry. of the, so <laughs> Jamie talked a lot about being stuck in this cycle, right? So one of the things that you can do to get yourself out of it is to ground yourself with nature. Um, you know, and there's a reason why we talk about this physically connecting with the earth by standing bare feet in it. It's because in doing so, you're connected with the energetic properties of Mother Earth and realigning yourself to a more harmonious state. It's proven that all living with constant that living with constant stress creates disease. This is this it is like a scientific it's, fact. It's, it's not proven. It's science. It's science. Um, it, we know that stress creates illnesses. Yeah. Right. Stress is what? It's up here. Stress on the body is controlled in the mind. Yep. Um, you know, I've always been really healthy in my life. I'm about to be 64 and I've never been sick. Um, I rarely ever get a cold or anything. And I'm like, gosh, I'm really lucky. No, it's not really that. It's just, I never think about being sick. <laughs> I just don't think like that. I'm like, I'm a healthy person. I might have a little bit of extra fluff, but you know, I'm a super healthy person. So, um, and that's how I think. And I think I believe that that's why I'm like, I'm not sick. Like I don't worry about cancers and all that stuff. So back to grounding yourself and like getting a, it's like kind of like breaking that cycle like get into nature it's a really good way to do this get your feet in the dirt get your feet in the sand get your hands in the dirt with plants get in the water hug but a tree. also meta <laughs> hug a tree as silly as that sounds but like really like touch nature like if you can't get naked in it it feels so amazing i love that in my pool oh my gosh but meditation and reflection can realign your spiritual self being in nature realigns with your physical self. Remember, we are souls having a human experience and we are energy experiencing a physical place. You know, when you start to think of yourself as energy and not this like body, not, this. not oh, yeah, oh, not, this. not this. I just told my daughter that I finally decided, I finally came to terms with, I'm going to be cremated. I never wanted to be cremated. I'm in the funeral business. I know what cremation is. I was like, that's gross. I don't want to do that. But then I've come to this place of like, what does it matter? Because whatever's, when I'm dead, that vessel, that's this body, that's not me. I'm gone. So who cares after that? So back to this. Remember, we're souls having a human experience. We're energy experiencing a physical place. This is why we have internal battles with ourselves. Yeah. Do you want to speak to this? I mean, so Sis, this is your... Oh, you're here I already um, changed oh, okay well just to remind you where you are she wrote a lot of really good stuff for this <laughs> this class you guys like really good it's it's part of the coursework so I you know to say it now is like to help me get it out there and just spread the word of this because we often when you're dealing in witchcraft for most people are like it spells and physical things and crystals and you know dress in black and all of that is great and fun and gorgeous but the true work in witchcraft is about really knowing yourself and your beliefs. 
So when we have this internal battle with ourselves, because part of us wants to just I mean, you guys can like physically raise your hand or you can, you know, just nod. But how many of you have thought about F working? I don't want to do this. I want to like run off to the woods and the mountains or the ocean somewhere and live a free life and like do art, sing music, dance naked around fire, whatever it is. But things that actually make your soul feel happy. And even if that's like helping other people, being in a community where you're just together and there's love and attention and affection and you don't have to worry about all the games that we have to play like in the quote-unquote rat race that our world is that's our that's our higher selves wanting to come out and and really do what we want to do and shine in our the highest way we know how to shine right doing what we love then there's the battle of your physical self that's going worry about everything you need money there's not enough of it oh my god gas is going up what about groceries you need to stockpile stuff rent you need mortgages. i mean all oh, the yeah. things all the worry things about. put a roof over your head and food in your stomach yeah I, that and then survival you know, bo- our actual bodies you know i gotta go to the gym i gotta eat healthy i gotta not consume this i gotta do whatever and then there's the worry what if i get sick what if someone dies what if i die what if i lose a hand what if i get in a car accident all of that crap that's all the physical worry stuff that happens in our mind because we have two sides of ourselves in here we have like the energetic side our soul that is there and then we have our human brain going you need to survive for as long as possible and probably procreate as many times as you can (laughs) done (laughs) if you've heard the the term like lizard brain that is it's literally the reptilian part of our brain that's the oldest part that you know formed however long ago if you believe in evolution that is just about survival and doesn't care about anything else. Those are the two sides of ourselves that we battle. So as you acknowledge them and think about what are you serving? Are you serving that survival physical self or are you getting more in line with your higher spiritual self? Because my true belief is now after breaking away from my reptilian brain a couple years ago and starting to seek my higher self's purpose, which I've always known what it was. I did it on the side for a long time, but really engaging in it now so many blessings have come my way since that. And I'm like, oh, damn, you know, all I had to do was like, let go of that expectation and be really bold. And I worked through some shit for about a year because I did not like, you know, not making as much money as I was in my normal job as I did with coaching and whatever. I was like, well, this is really scary. And that's my human self going, you're not going to survive. You're going to end up homeless or, you know, you're going to have to live under a, a tree or the highway bridge or whatever all those things that kept happening in my brain, I had to fight past them and go like, no, the universe will protect me and take care of me. Things will come my way the way that I want them to. Speaking to the universe like a friend is one of my go-to sayings as people start trying to understand their spiritual self. Say what you want to the universe like it's your best friend and you're telling them like, can you please just, you know, pick me up a pizza tonight? Like, just do it. But do that in a way that's not food. It's the goals and the dreams and the desires that you have. But just like you would talk to a friend. Magical properties are the same as energetic properties. Energetically, when you don't mesh with the color or colors, you can interpret that as you not needing or wanting to connect with that energy. And that's pretty much it. It's not, <laughs> it's not just colors. It's anything. It's, it's like people, anything. places, whatever, literally anything in your world. Any, um, so how can this help you? Yeah, so um, this was a lot of theory. Now you guys sort of understand why we're bringing elements into our practices. Why are these things, number one, how are they magical? Well, they all are made of energy and that's how they have magical properties. They have an association, right? Why do we bring them into our practice? Because they can elevate our vibration and they can elevate the vibration of the thing that you're doing, whatever you're in. And they, I, we already decided, like I didn't put in the last one, color, um, words and numerology but that's a perfect way to bring in something like words have energy right these are everything that we speak has energy so for next week that's one of the things that i'm adding into that is like numerology and how to do it and then you know a short class on numerology i can't go over the whole thing but then the words that you speak and how that helps you it's why mantras and affirmations work so well well, so I had a tree. So I just went, we just went through Hurricane Ian here in Southwest Wee. Florida and down the street from me, this massive tree fell. I mean, it had to have been there for at least a hundred years. It's so huge. It was so sad to see it just fell. It just like, it was just completely like on its side. And I went up and touched it one night. And then I was just like feeling the energy of that tree. And then I took some bark from that tree and I put it in the jar because I'm keeping that because at some point in time, I'm going to use that because imagine the energy 
in that 100 year old tree and all that it's seen in that bark and they're like man that is some powerful stuff right there so all right th those are the types of things like the things like right now we're talking theory next week we'll talk more like concrete things, things that you can put in your actually correspondences and things and lists that you can add to your book of shadows in case you're wondering where this is going because it's a lot of yeah. <laughs> it's it's a, a lot you, of this theory. is an important part of building the base for the information on why having the why can help you feel so much more connected to the things that you choose if you're just choosing them because you read it in a book there's not as much you can't get the feeling from that you're like all right so now i'm supposed to there's get no this connection random thing and use this and then what like what's the expectation there so now as you know the energetic building to it but i wanted to you gave such a great example of like how cat felt about this she that tree had to be like 200 years old it was massive it was like if you stood a car up like standing up on its tail end that's how thick around the tree was i'm telling you guys it was massive it was insane um but so if you watched her feeling and the way she described the tree and what she thought about she's already giving energy to that item and making it even more real what she thinks about it because she's feeding that energy to it saying that it's important saying that it's seen all these things saying that it's like you know, magical in its own right, because it stood there for 200 years. She's, that is an example of how we give energy and accept energy back and forth between these things, because we resonate with it, because you feel it, the way that you explain the emotion. And also, and if you're wondering, like, I didn't really think about how I might use that bark in some future spell, but now the first thing that comes to my mind as I think about it is protection, because that bark protected the interior of that tree. That, I think that's the, per you, science, sure. like, Nerdy witch, lady. <laughs> nerdy witch. That's the purpose Listen, of bark. What's the growth purpose? and long longevity? I mean, growth okay. and longevity well, for too. a tree that old. Yeah, that's what I would think. But yeah. uh, also protection, just because it's bark. And then yeah. you did something with luck with bark, didn't you? Luck. What was bark? it? Yeah. Anyway, never mind. Snake skin. <laughs> <laughs> Prosperity, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Um, All right. Did you start? Oh my oh. god! I'm so sorry, you guys. I did not know. Okay. Um, She's gonna get five minutes. I'm not okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put money in the jar. <laughs> oh, I'm making that. I better not become that comment where we have to have a cell phone goes off in the middle of a meeting jar. Oh my goodness. Okay. So magical ingredients are tool or another tool for witches to give extra meaning to their spell work, food, drinks, spaces, and daily life. You have the power to change the way a space feels, you feel, and how you feel about your food, drinks, home clothes etc using those physical elements so if you understand energetically wait first off has anybody seen hoarders the most awful train wreck you can't look away from when it comes on tv that is an example of like that is emotion and stuff piled up for years and years and years that creates more problems i mean that like we would all know how we feel walking into a space like that right now imagine walking into a space that's super clean, maybe like a hotel lobby or something weird like that, where it's just really put together by experts and the space feels like luxurious or amazing. That's and they, it smells good. They I'm place super the like, items there. I, smells. I mean, that's like, I don't want to say it's a science, but it's definitely an art form no, of some kind. Science. It's marketing. <laughs> Decorating and all of that. I mean, there's, that's a whole job for people. We do feng shui and that's a whole job. So creating your environment using the items, just not in the way that they look, but the way that they make you feel, you're experiencing the energy of those items. So if any of you are thinking right now, like what's in my house that I don't energetically match with that every time I run into it, I want to kick it, hit it. Literally out. run into it. Maybe it's that table at the end of, the end of the couch that you keep bumping into. Something. Maybe it doesn't go there. Mm -hmm. It's just... You're, you're going to start feeling the energy out of the things that you bring into it. So this, it's great how this is in spells. Like that's where we think of it in witchcraft, that items have this magical ability for us, right? They, they um, represent an element. They represent feelings and a purpose, but the items in our house do as well. So it, it all does, it all meshes together very well. And I just want to say something. If anybody's feeling the pressure to go clean out a closet or a drawer <laughs> or whatever right now, because they know they got a bunch of crap in there, please don't because both Jamie and I have spaces in our house where we're like this space needs work 
right now out. yeah okay. so right now i'm just you know i do this sometimes i go three weeks and i let a thing sit there and i'm like i really hate it but i'm not motivated enough to do something about it so if that if you're experiencing anything like that please don't feel please don't feel be hard on yourself about it because we just have to get to a place where we're like we're ready jamie just had a huge flood in her basement she's got her basement was more than a basement. It was like a living space, a crafting space, a party it's space. Studio. It's a recording studio. And when I tell you that shit is everywhere, it is, it's, it's chaos. It's, it's really, healthy. it's flood it, water. Yeah. So. so, you know, so she's going to have to like take, take your chunks at a time because some of these projects it's are overwhelming. Really big. It's overwhelming. So anyway, it, I just want to say if, if you no have pressure. a closet, a drawer, um, a room, whatever, a coffee table that you're like, yeah, but it was my dad's and he passed away and it's like the last thing and I don't want to get rid of it. That's okay. Just don't, don't be hard on yourself. Give yourself some time. In fact, meditate on it. Like, what is this really <laughs> doing for it. you? Yeah. Sit with it for sit a while, with it. but whatever you do, don't, don't be hard on We're yourself. We're not trying to pressure you guys into yeah. doing too much at once. No. Cause just kind of like start thinking about it and how these things around your home are they making you happy? Are the clothes in your closet? Did they make, when you look at them, did they make you happy? Um, you know, the pile of laundry, this is there. Does that make you happy? Well, maybe you can work on that on Sunday night while you watch Game of Thrones or whatever it is, House of Dragons. Um, House, House of, of Dragons. Dragons. <laughs> All right, back to the lesson so we can wrap this up and get on with questions. Um, do you want to, do you want to do mm. this part or mm -hmm. you want me to do it? Mm. You can do it. Okay. So how can this help you aside from what the examples that we've already given you, which I think we've given you a lot, but we're going to yeah. quickly go through what Jamie wrote. And again, if we already did that. if you um okay, tell me where to start then. Oh, okay. If you came in late, uh oh, yeah, and or right. you want to get the complete lesson in writing, it is available through email. You can subscribe on our channel, which I just put in the link. Um where just did, FYI. Where did this part? All right. So I did write some things down that I feel like we can find in everyday items so that you guys can start thinking about it now. And we have two book references. If you want to find out the magical properties of um, things within your household. And normally, like the things we talk about are really herbs and spices right now. To get into what your coffee table or your couch might be, that would be more color associations, which we didn't put in the, this lesson. It'll be for next week. But, um, all right, so if you have, like, I don't know a household that doesn't have cinnamon. Cinnamon is such an American spice, like, especially for the fall. Um, adding cinnamon to things, cinnamon is a, is a fire spice. So this is things that's like transformation. It's also money, luck, and protection. So adding cinnamon to something, even just the tiniest amount, that adds that intent. So if you think about the thing, like, I'm adding cinnamon to this drink, whatever food, intending to bring about this. That is all you need to start bringing things into fruition. So something as simple as cinnamon. You can also do this for other people because my daughter doesn't know this, but in the morning after we work out, we come back here and we have a couple cups of coffee before we both get off to our day jobs. This time? And I, yeah, you're, yeah, you. Me, yeah, this this time? Time. Oh, okay. And I make our coffee, right? And I stir into it. When I stir into it, I do it intentionally. And I say, may she have a really good day and a great day. And then I'll hear from her later on. She's like, man, I had a really good day today. And I'm like, really? here she is canceling spots for me. <laughs> I, I love how we're in, but yeah, <laughs> I don't say anything, but I'm you sharing I'm sharing it now only because that intention of stirring some a little bit of cinnamon into your coffee in the morning and being grateful for what you have and hoping that you have a good day. There's power in that. There's power in those words. Starting there's, your very, day right. there's power in that intention. So yeah. um this and this is witchcraft, you guys. This is this it's as it's, simple as it's, that. It's, it's as simple as that. And it can get as complicated as you want it to get as well. <laughs> It can it be can, so simple though. Like so you simple. don't you don't ever have to cast a spell as a witch ever if you're feeling pressure for that. I was like, oh god. Not in the way that like not in the way that other people make it look, you know. And I go back to the whole like the craft movie from the 90s or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't have to be what spell casting looks like. Um, but it's funny that you said that because the next thing on my list is when you prepare meals for your family. So when I make things for people, um, you know, I have gatherings every like six weeks-ish. As I make food and things for them, I'm thinking about what goes into it. It could be like as simple as picturing little love hearts going in there. And I just want this food to like feel 
like love when they eat, drink, whatever, or little health hearts. It's like, I know this is going to be really good for their health. This is what I'm sort of, I want to say, imbuing, in, in, in yeah, imbuing into the mixture. Yeah. No. That is you do that with the salads. I mean, you told me about um, yeah. making these healthy salads. And as you cut the things up, you I'm think about, about your husband, you know, you, yeah, you're thinking about your husband like you want, you want to be healthy. Healthy. Jamie's, Jamie's married to a guy a little bit older than her. Just a little bit. <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> 20 years. That's so, funny. you know, so she needs him to be around for a while. I want him to be I around mean, for a while. Yeah, because um, so she, when she makes a salad, she thinks as she cuts up the vegetables, she thinks about I think about his health. I'm like, yeah. Health, so. Don't want anything. And he's, you know, crazy. Super man. So, and you her. guys, and so just think about this. If throughout your day, if the things that you do, if you did them with intention and you just thought good thoughts as you did them, how much more, how much more, how much more powerful would you feel <laughs> and more like happy would you feel at the end of your day it, if you and start if you started doing that as like a ritual yeah to just like everything you do you just put some good thought into it that's witchcraft y'all that's, that's witchcraft. it that's it it's a, it can be as simple as that um so the other thing that I put was like salt and pepper so I was really trying to look for everyday items that people have around the house all right so salt is not an herb or spice, but it's a mineral. So it's technically a rock crystal type mineral, right? Because it's edible. And it's a grounding mineral. And so when we use salt, you can think about being reconnected to the vibration of this earth and feeling like your feet are more on the ground and that you're in this world trying to live your best life. Pepper is also a grounding spice. So pepper being the spice that comes from the tiny little seeds. And also protection. It's protection. And if you want to get technical with it, Lots of different kinds of peppers are quickening. So if you need things to come about quickly, adding pepper to them can also do Ooh, that. Yeah. Um, all right. I don't like this, but lemon in your water at restaurants. Yes. I was a bartender and that's why I don't like, I don't like things in my drink. I just don't like Because it. I just remember some of the people who would cut up things. I'm like, you know what? This is not. <laughs> Please don't tell us. I'm not going to tell you anything. It's just that. <laughs> I have trust issues when it comes to people preparing my food. <laughs> like, I want no garnishments on my drink. Don't touch it. Don't squeeze it in there for me. I just don't want it. I don't know how long it's been sitting there. I don't know how fresh it is. I don't know. I don't, this is something I don't like. But lemon, if you do like lemon in your water, you can make it at home, which by the way, you can add any citrus, fruit. I mean, you can even add oranges to your water. It's great. Watermelon, strawberries when it's summertime. Cucumbers. Cucumbers in the water is amazing. Um, lemon is a purification thing so it's really funny that when lemon and water became like a big thing the whole world was on a health kick it's like oh this is like diet water <laughs> and I love that it's now really normal and nobody talks about why we put lemons in water but it's a diuretic almost it helps cleanse your system out so as you eat lemon in whatever form you want to it's a purification that uh, fruit and vegetable <laughs> um okay so then I wrote that magic is all around us and you don't have to look any further than your spice cupboard. Find out what's in your spice cupboard and then please look towards anybody who has spices listed out there. But the book that I go to is uh, the Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Herbs. He has a lot of great stuff in there. I got it used. So if you get it used, you'll be like me yay, and not create more books that we don't need in the world. But People buy this all the time, don't use it, and then put it up for sale on like the used bookstores and stuff. Um, I find it vital when I really want to bring in something that goes with a day that I'm trying to create a feeling for. I'm like, I'm going to pick something out of here that's a spice that's super easy to do. Most of them are everyday household items. There's vegetables and fruits in here as well. And if you love to be in the kitchen, like I don't, um, I am not a good cook. I burn everything and... <laughs> I would eat the same thing six days in a row. And so my <laughs> husband is a cook. But the other one that is out there is the uh, Wicca in the kitchen. But I'm going to let you guys in on secret. Oh, sorry. That was I was going to leave it there for a second. Sorry about that. See it. Um, I am not Wiccan and I do not practice the Wiccan religion. I am a solitary witch, but that doesn't make the information in here any less useful. This book has been published not published, printed in 18 different versions, okay? So- In 30 years. In 30 years. It's a 30-year-old book. It came out in 1990, and it used to be called um, The Magic of Food, and then it was called The Magic in Food, 
And then in like 2006 or something, they, they made it Wicca because it wasn't reaching enough people. So they, you know, Wicca became a, a, a recognized religion in 1986. So they put Wicca on there to help more people find it. It is still useful for anybody who doesn't want to follow Wicca, but, you know, understands that things have magical properties. Scott Cunningham went around the world for many, many years collecting information from cultures on how they use stuff. So there's a lot of folklore in it. There's examples of how people, you know, use stuff, um, which I don't know. Superstitions are also like a form of magic. I don't know if anybody knows that. If you truly believe that seven years of bad luck happens with a broken mirror, you know, if like walking under a ladder, superstitions are also sort of a form of like, I don't know. When I stepped on a crack, it never broke my mother's back. So, you know, <laughs> I feel sorry. like she's sad about that. Or at one time, I might have been sad about that. I'm so sorry. Mom. When she was 13. Yeah, when I was young. <laughs> so in our, okay. So because it, and I'm not, we're it's not going to, I know it's 746 know. and we still have another page, but the, we're going to jump ahead. So if you want the rest of it, you're going to have to sign up for the email. And the but, rest, wait, the rest of it is you guys, all I did was put together a list of spices that are common for Mexican food, mm -hmm. Indian food, American food, and Italian food. Cause I thought it would be really fun to look at the spices included in that and then list what their properties are. So, you know, like Mexican food, love, health, healing, luck, money, protection, psychic ability. We both like, love Mexican food. That's so interesting. Yeah, it's my favorite. My husband loves Italian. My, All right. My least favorite. So your homework this week, practice creating your own spell by gathering ingredients you would use in a spell. This can, this, this is hard to explain in writing. So there is a video on our YouTube channel about creating a spell. Is, is that there? what you, no, well, this I didn't is what that. you wrote. I didn't write that, you wrote that. I think she meant to send <laughs> that part out in the email so they could watch this video. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Perfect. I think the thing to do, I guess I'm, okay, scrap, back up. <laughs> uh, I think what I would say is go in your kitchen and look to see what spices you have and then look up their uh, properties. And, and record those in your book for things that you keep, like cinnamon. Yes. And hot peppers and whatever, you know. What spices like do you love? You know, like, you know, are, you spices hot, do you hot, hot yeah, are you like, um, what is it, Indian food with all I the curries Indian and stuff like that? Find out what those, um, oh, each one of those spices, like we said, everything has, has a vibration. So what do those Magical things mean? Purpose. And put yeah. that in your book of shadows. Yes. And you guys do not have to buy a book. You can look everything up online. Just look for a couple websites. I don't have any to recommend on websites because I do have the books, but there is a ton of free information out there. You should not have to actually buy the book, especially if you have like 10 spices you want to look up. It's all out there. The other thing that's really cool is if you look up the history of where the spice originated and how people have been using it in folklore, it's amazing. Like I learned this thing about garlic that um the egyptians used to feed all the people that helped build the pyramids garlic because it made them stronger i'm like what <laughs> random rabbit hole i went it, down today it Just made saying. them stronger it smelling them, and it was a sure. well it was an appetite suppressant because you know technically i hate saying the word but technically there were slaves building the pyramids for them for the pharaohs and whatever and they didn't want to have to feed them more, so they fed them a lot of garlic. I'm like, that is crazy, and that feels like a lot of punishment, but it's a spice that is fire-associated, so it makes your energy run hotter, and so when you eat garlic, it kind of turns everything up, so I think that is it for us. That's a lot, <laughs> and we only have like 10 minutes till eight. I'm sorry we ran over. Thank you for joining us for week seven of the Beginner Witch series. Tonight, we talked about magical properties of everyday items. <laughs> I need like a prayer and a teleprompter. <laughs> It'll be great.